Welcome to the Passion Behind the Arts Show. It's all about diving in with individuals to learn the story behind their passion. It's your host, Daryl Pena. It's another week, another amazing guest, and another opportunity for me to bring you value through someone else's story. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. Oh my goodness. Episode 100 live event was amazing. So much value. Each guest broke down just various ways on on how they turned their passion into dollars. And I mean, I'm just so thankful, so grateful for each guest. So grateful for each person that came on and joined like it was just an amazing experience yes i was beat after just streaming live for nine hours it was crazy but it was well worth it you guys are in for a treat a truly a treat so get ready for an amazing experience on how on how each guest turned their passion into dollars local geek is joining us we live Hey, we how are you doing? Live. How you doing? What's up, man? Yeah, good. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But dude, I'm so glad to have you on this time around. I know the last. Yeah, time, I'm glad I can be. I, I can't believe that you've actually done 100 episodes. That's amazing. <laughs> well, Ian, it's super exciting to have you on. For those who don't know who you are, who because. To be honest, I feel like it's only been like the past couple of years you've kind of put Ian Paget out there. It's been yeah, just Logo yeah, Geek, yeah. just strictly Logo Geek. So let people know who you okay, are. Okay, so I'm a graphic designer, and for about five years now, I've been working on a a, a project that just started as fun uh, called Logo Geek, and I, I started that just so that I could practice working on logo design because in the job I had. I, I still have that job part time. I worked on Lego design maybe once every two months, three months. And every time I started a new project, I I just felt like I, you know, I'm starting this again. I'm having to learn everything from scratch. So I started Logo Geek just for fun about five years ago. And now, you know, here today, I've um it's my main source of income working on logo design for clients and i've built a community and i have a podcast and basically everything i'm doing um as much as what i can do is all around logo design and logo geek so that that's my main thing now <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome and like you have a enormous following not just a little following, it's growing okay? <laughs> it's enormous <laughs> enormous um but one thing I want to tell everyone, like the dude behind this whole Logo Geek, Geek um, movement is probably one of the most helpful person through this podcast journey for me. No I, try and, I try to help as many people as I can. I know we've had lots of conversations over the last couple of years. So I, I'm not sure. Was When I had you on my podcast, was that the first podcast? you were again um it wasn't the first podcast but it was one of the early ones um i think the very first one that i did was being freelance oh and okay, i cool. literally i literally just did it on my laptop I had my laptop out and i was absolutely terrified <laughs> i think the one that i did with you is one of the first video ones that, that i've done okay um, because we actually did it on camera that time and i've always been quite uncomfortable doing things like what we're doing now but I've been doing more and, uh, you know, I've been trying to push myself to do this type of thing. So you probably noticed I've been doing a lot more podcast interviews and I've done a couple of live interviews like this. And um, a few months back, I actually did a live panel, you know, in front of an audience. So I'm working my way to doing more, <laughs> but it's taken time. <laughs> oh, that's that's so cool, man, because I know like just knowing you i know that was like a big deal for you like it is a big being, deal and being in front of the camera and just you know i know that yeah was yeah i think for me it's it's just a case of um learning to cope with it because i, I still get anxious with anything like this but i found that the more i do it and the more i push myself to do you know things like this and um, public speaking is 
what was once my greatest fear is now something that I get excited about and uh, I, I still like I said I still get nervous about it but when I'm actually doing it it's fine and then afterwards I feel quite pumped so I, I, <laughs> I want to do more I'm getting there <laughs> all right so let's jump into the money like some of the ways that you bring in revenue right okay so, down, so right? number one the absolute main thing for me at the moment is actual projects for clients so trading time for money mm -hmm. so for me uh, a lot of the projects most of my projects are logo design so um, people find me via a google search they get in touch and then you know have a conversation and um, then i would work on, on a logo or a brand identity or, or basically services so i'm trading time for money mm -hmm. so that's the first one and at the moment that's the the main source of income but as you know with anything like this if you're trading time for money then there's only so much you can do so the next two things is taking that a level up and it's more scalable so things like sponsorships so at the moment i'm i've been working on a podcast and even though the podcast is you know content that i'm creating that i want to create you know like what we're doing now so we're just having a conversation I'm able to speak to people that I've been a fan of for years, pick their brains for an hour and then release that as content. And I'm able to get a sponsor on that. And um, I release my podcast in seasons and basically I get a, a sponsor, to, a, a company to sponsor a season. And um, mm. uh, that's been a good chunk of my income as well. But, you know, I've done... I'm on season four now and I only started that about a year and a half back and um, FreshBooks have been amazing. FreshBooks is my sponsor nice. and they have continue to sponsor each season. So that's number two, you know, creating sponsor content. Um, I bought in other sponsors on that. So the, the podcast has just been amazing because creating content that I want to create and then by mentioning this company, they will basically pay my time to create that so that's been amazing as well and then the last one is affiliate marketing so for anyone that's listening that doesn't know what affiliate marketing is it's basically where you promote someone else's um, product or service and when someone goes through that link and makes a purchase at no extra cost to them you basically get a, a percentage of that sale. So I, um, with affiliate, with, with affiliate partnerships, that's probably the most scalable thing that I have and something I really want to do more of. But here today, it's just, it just makes a couple of hundred pounds each month, but it's a couple of hundred pounds that <laughs> I've not, I've not needed to do a lot for. So with, with affiliate marketing, um, with any content I create, I try to stitch in links. So with the podcast, sometimes I might mention a product, mm -hmm. you know, I'll just give like a 20 second slot. I'll mention the product. <laughs> then I'll say, you know, go to logogeek.uk forward slash extension. Okay. That's, that's one that I created. So what I've done is I created a, a, a link, a 301 redirect that will redirect to um that affiliate link yeah, so yeah. i'm knotting i'm knotting those affiliate links and everything that i do so in any blogs i write i'm sharing links in any um show notes i do i'll share them and any basically anything i'm doing whether it's audio or um content where i can if i mention a product i try to get an affiliate link for that and um I've, I've been really noticing the benefits of this this year mm. um like last month i well uh, a couple of weeks back i got sent a check for 50 pound and i'm like where has this come from and i literally have no idea the source of that link so affiliate link is definitely scalable because it, there's an infinite number you, you know uh, you, you make money in your sleep when you do affiliate marketing like I said, at the moment, it's not a big earner for me. My main earner is actually trading my time for money, you know, offering a service. But 
affiliate partnerships is where it's at long term, I think. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the sponsorship. Like, what were yeah, some sure. of the things, what's some of the things that you did to kind of, first, first of all, get a sponsorship? Like, how okay. did you... Yeah. Well, um, for quite a few years, I've been building an audience through Twitter primarily. And a few years back, I, I was approached by FreshBooks. They actually sent me an email and asked if they could do some kind of partnership in some way. And being honest, I thought it was junk and I put it in my <laughs> trash can. Um, but um, it was about two years ago now, I started working as a co-host on another podcast with Milo. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, Preston over at Milo, but we... Okay. Okay. Yeah. We create, yeah. We so we created a um a, a podcast, and I was a a co a co host on that show. And the the way that I basically found out about sponsorship is that Preston is very good at this type of thing. He you know is making a huge income with sponsorships, and this podcast that I was a co host on that I would have done for free, you know, because I I'm learning from Preston and Ryan the the other co-host um Preston mentioned to me that he's you know making some money from this through sponsorship and he's going to split it three ways and he told me at the time it's not much money you know because he needed to cover costs and stuff like that but when I found out how much money it was it was a few thousand dollars it was a it was a large amount of money and well for me anyway so I found out and I thought okay that that's amazing and then ryan ryan did his own show he got fresh books to sponsor them and i just started talking to the guys like do you think that they would sponsor something if i did something so they basically said yes and so what i did is um i went on the fresh books website and um found the contact details and basically emailed them and I, I pitched out my idea. I explained the audience and they basically come back with how much would you be interested in doing this for? And we agreed a price and it's pretty much been that way from day one. But in terms of advice that I could give with this, because I feel like I, I got lucky with that to some extent. Um, one, one thing that I've done since then, because I've, I've had FreshBooks sponsor me and I've had another company called Hola Brief and I think I can get other sponsors. Look at other content similar to yours and see who sponsors them and then reach out to those companies. Because if those companies are already sponsoring similar people to you, then they will probably sponsor what you're doing. I'd also add as well, um, the money that they're paying me, it's not just for a mention on the podcast that a lot right. of people think. Right. So the, the agreement is that there's what's called a pre-roll and a mid-roll. Not sure if you're familiar with this. So basically 30 seconds at the beginning, I need to speak about FreshBooks. I can say what I want, but I have to speak about FreshBooks and mention their link. And the same at the midpoint. And that's a 60 second, um, that's, that's called a mid-roll. Mm -hmm. And then within this package that I'm basically providing to them is I have to mention them in the show notes. I have to add a link. I have to add the logo in a prominent position and I have to include um, a mention of them in any email marketing I do. So what they do is from day one, from day one, I didn't actually have a podcast. So they actually sponsored my content without having seen any evidence. But because I had an audience of um, it's like 90,000 at the time on Twitter, mm -hmm. and I had a decent number on um, Facebook as well, because I had the audience already, I was able to show stats. I was able to show stats on my website. They could see that paying that money had value in it already. Right, so I'm creating right. a lot of content for them that's got links to them. So there's a lot of value to them just in that, but then obviously um, sponsor, get, you know, being on the podcast as well as a bonus for them. And uh, yeah, so I did season one. 
Um, when it came around to season two, they basically told me that the numbers wasn't good enough and um, they don't they don't plan to sponsor another season. Maybe they come back to me in like season three or four. And maybe a month later, the numbers must have picked up because they got back in touch and said, you know, well, look, we're happy to do more content. Mm. And uh they agreed to do season three and on the back of season three they just said are you doing another season and it's gone from there so <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome that's awesome that's so cool um so sponsorships that's that's one way to kind of generate Absolutely. revenue yeah and i feel like if you are putting out some kind of content and you know in the past and on on and on different platforms they kind of poo poo on on, on, on sponsorships you know what i mean but i feel like mm. if you're comfortable with it and you feel like i think it's it's a lot of it is like a personal decision but if you're comfortable with it like if you could generate some kind of revenue through yeah. that i mean the brands have the money i mean what people don't understand brands are the ones that fund a lot of economies but... yeah 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 and i would say um people are used to it like how many podcasts do you listen to that have advertisements at the beginning how many tv shows do you listen to that got adverts every half an hour you know it's normal mm -hmm. people are familiar with it uh one thing i would add make sure that you actually want to be affiliated with that company you know right. don't just take money from some random company that's giving you money make sure that you believe in that product and you'd actually use that product because you know something like fresh books i i've used them mm -hmm. um and you know i would recommend them but if some i i've i've been approached by you know like gambling sites and i, I don't agree with that obviously they have money but i i wouldn't want to share that but any any time i share affiliate links or have any kind of um sponsorship connection right. i believe in that product and i'm happy to share that product so I, I think you have to believe in the product that you're sharing and it has to be relevant to the audience as well that's true that's true i, I agree with that because like trying to promote something that you've never used or like you don't yeah, really it's the like you have yeah. no you have no connection to um i'm pretty sure like of course there's exception to the rule and maybe they give you like a test and you get to learn about the product and stuff like that but i think you've got to be careful when it comes to stuff like that yeah i do think so like i said you just need to actually be able to put your hand on your heart and actually you know physically like that product otherwise it's just it's just fake and people won't trust you and you know it's, if you're building up a reputation which i feel um with social media you are people want to know people will buy things from people that they know like and trust right so if you can build up that trust obviously people um believe what you're saying and um even though you're getting paid by someone to promote something you should you should have you should believe in that product and actually want to use that product and that's what i've always tried to do with everything that i'm doing so um you know font bundles that i share i'd actually buy them myself i'd, right. I'd actually share them willingly uh books i you know i have them on my shelf i'd buy them i recommend them but you can you can get links from amazon um so there's there's loads of ways that you can make money from things that you would already promote and that's basically what i feel affiliate marketing should be making right. money from things that you would already promote anyway right or the only only other time I say it, another exception is if you may not a hundred percent be familiar with the product, but you know the yeah. person you know the person behind the product. Like yeah. say if I'm not like if Ian comes out with something, I may not a hundred percent know a lot about it, but because Ian is doing it, I'm gonna be behind it. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I I totally agree with that, and and I think again that comes from building up trust. <laughs> Um, because obviously we've spoken a lot personally and um, like if you did anything it doesn't really matter like if you bought out a book I just buy it right. and and it's not 
with things like that it's not always because you actually want to read that book but because you want to support, support that person and I, I think that's why people like Gary V I don't know if you're a Gary V fan or any um people in the audience are he's sold loads of books and he's actually when he promotes it it's like look guys I've been giving you loads of value by this book you know as a way of right <laughs> I've done I've done the same with people like Pat Flynn. Um, I'm a massive fan of Pat Flynn, and when he released the book, I just bought it without right. even knowing what it was about. And when he's done training courses, I I signed up for them just because I know that it's going to be good without actually seeing any of the content from it. All right, All right, that makes sense. That, I'm I'm hundred percent behind you. So let's get into a little bit more of affiliate marketing because yeah, sure. one thing I like about that thing is like this the there's a phrase that you said, you'll be able to make money while you're sleeping. Yeah. And um, that thing is so awesome. Like I haven't done much affiliate, but I've done a few drop shipping and to be able to not have to touch a product and know that it's sold and everything yeah, is taken yeah, care yeah. of. <laughs> and I look at my, I wake up in the morning and I see some money in my account. I'm like, Mind. Well, yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing. And I, over the last few months, I've actually been doing more of that. So one of my, um, I, I do a fair amount of affiliate marketing, but there, there's a few that I've done with companies. But one, um, something I've started doing recently is I found out about this guy that's building this product called Logo Package or Logo pa Package Express. And I found out what it is. And it's just, just a guy called Michael, he's working on it on his own. And um, I thought, you know, this is perfect for my audience. This product sounds amazing. This is exactly what I need and what I think people in the community I build will really want to have. So rather than, you know, working directly with a company, which is how affiliate marketing tends to work, I just contacted this guy directly and said, look, can I help promote this? And we can do some kind of affiliate with it and um he never done it before because he, he's literally just released the product on gumtree mm, i think okay. it's gumtree so he yeah. just released that and through gumtree have um an affiliate scheme built in so i spoke to him about that and um he just released this product which is just scripts and actions so it's a fairly basic product you know you could probably build it yourself if you know illustrator well enough but um it saves a lot of time so I thought this is great I'm going to reach out to him and offer to do this and he was really excited because he'd been trying to tap into Facebook groups for some time and um, we just spoke we made an agreement I started sharing that product and quite a few people bought it and um, with basically the, 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 the way that affiliate marketing works is that people buy the product through your link and then you make a percentage of that sale. So anytime right. someone buys that product through your link, you make money without doing anything other than, you know, actually sharing it. So, uh, so with him, I, you know, we created a campaign around it. So um, I already had content online about creating logo files. So within that blog, I, you know, which gets a lot of traffic already, I put a banner at the top and a banner at the bottom and mentioned it in the blog itself. And I also mentioned it in the Facebook community and um, on Twitter as well. And I'm basically one of the first people to see this product and share this product. And I know other people are now looking into it. I know the, the future's interested in it. And, oh. But because I kind of like first move, first advantage, I've been making, you know, a small amount of money each week from that product. And all I've done is literally posted a, a thing in the Facebook group and put out a few tweets. So, uh, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of conversations, but the amount of work, but the amount of money that you get is very minimal. And I found that to be really valuable. And, and with him, because he's just starting out, I've helped him to make an income from it. So yeah. he's been able to level up that product and create an even better product, which is coming out in April. And we've just done a campaign around that and I've helped sell um basically half the products that he sold which is really nice and uh, because i've helped him he's increasing the the percentage so that's been really amazing to work in that way but the the typical way that 
you you do affiliate um, marketing is like I said, find um, find products that you think your audience will like. So for me, um, because my audience is graphic designers and logo designers, it's things like fonts, um, software that makes people's life easier, books, anything like that. You can find those companies. Um, it's easy if they're a software company. Most software companies have an affiliate scheme already. Um, so if if there's a website that sells a product, flick into their footer, see if they got an affiliate scheme, see if it says, you know, says sign up to our affiliate scheme. A lot of websites already have this. If they don't, just send them a message, ask them, do you have an affiliate scheme? Would you be interested in doing some kind of partnership? So I've done that as well. Um, and what happens is you'll be given a link and just share that wherever it seems appropriate. So whether that be in blogs you create or um you know just post through social media or um you know videos or podcasts or whatever any content you're creating not these things in and and like i said earlier in the conversation if the url is long and weird which they normally are use in i use wordpress and in wordpress there's a plugin called pretty link okay. and you can basically create a what's called a 301 redirect so rather than you know gumtree dot forward slash one two three four zero one one you know whatever the url is you can create logogeek.uk forward slash package or forward slash extension or forward slash skillshare or whatever and in conversations like this i you know you can you can say oh i'd really recommend checking out skillshare and if you want a three month trial, just head over to logogeek.uk forward slash Skillshare. And that will just three, 301 redirect to that place. And if someone buys through that, then obviously I make a small amount of money from that. And if you keep doing that with everything that you're doing, eventually you'll, you'll have like what, what, what happened to me last week where I just get a, a check and I'm like, I don't know where this money's come from, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I totally I'm there with you. I'm there with you. For anyone that's watching, um, I still have a few more giveaways to to do. So take a screenshot and share it on the stories or your Instagram feed. You need I can, to do one like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we can do some more. Um, that I could do some more giveaways. Um, there's a few giveaways. D Dustin Lee from Retro Supply. Um, he 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 went all out with the giveaways, so I have a few more stuff to give away. A couple stuff from Retro Supply to give away. So please, Sounds just screen, yeah, screenshot and share it. Tag me and Ian in it, and that I can make sure that people get these stuff. Sounds so, really good. So um, one of the most important things though, like, is to have an audience to 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 mm -hmm. kind of present these things to. So some of your top three top three if you have three don't have to be three top three tips on growing a quality audience okay so i think if you want to build an audience you need to be able to have something that that audience would be interested in so um share share content so one thing that i i did at the beginning and i'm still doing now is um through logo geek I literally just find interesting content that other people have created, shared it on Twitter and, you know, I'm building a resource, an interesting resource that people that are interested in logo design will want to follow. And, you know, you can change whatever that topic is, but basically share content that's of interest. And, and then every single day, post something every single day, because you want to create a resource and, um, one thing that I did at the beginning was basically use Twitter and find people that are sharing similar content to what I was sharing and um, follow people that are interacting with their content. I, I do think that's a little bit spammy. So what I tend to recommend now is um, a question. How many people can you talk to every day easily? If you spoke to one person every single day, just one person every single day, 
and they followed you back, which they probably will, you know, if you, because you're talking with someone, you're making a friend, you're building a relationship. If you spoke to one person every single day, by the end of the week, you would have seven followers. Right. Now, if you did that every single day with 10 people, you know, just, I'm not talking like whole in-depth conversations like we are, just commenting on their thing, asking questions, um, you know, with each person, maybe spend five, 10 minutes just slowly building a relationship with them you could comfortably speak to 10 people in an hour you could speak to five people in half an hour and build proper relationships with them by the end of that week rather than seven you'd have 70 or you know 35 if it was five and if you did that every single day for an entire year how many people are you actually going to know and actually had conversations with that's basically how you build an audience you just you just keep talking with people and providing value and creating a resource that's of interest so even though you're building those one-on-one -on -one relationships while you're doing that your audience is growing naturally anyway you know you'll keep you'll just keep building your your audience in that way um so that that's the main thing i would say is just keep sharing valuable content that's of interest to an audience and then find people that are interacting with that content already and just start engaging with them have conversations easy to do on twi on twitter in particular on twitter um i know there's accounts like logo design love you know that david o runs i know people like jacob cast has an audience already you can find people in your niche or niche yeah, over your side um <laughs> <laughs> find find people in your in your uh, niche that are already sharing content similar to you go on their twitter wall or whatever or facebook you can do this anywhere and start speaking with people that's already interacting with you, your content it's really easy to do online like if you want to find someone that's interested in worms you just search worms on um twitter and you'll find people that are talking about it and interested in it and whatever your niche is it's so easy to find those people. It's the same with Facebook. On Facebook, there are Facebook groups. So you can go into those groups and um, start interacting with the content, start sharing. Just, you know, if, if you want to build a real audience, a real audience is based on one to one communication. Build, making friends. You're basically making friends, but with a large number of people. And obviously, you're going to get to a point where it's unsustainable. You can't. But then, you know, if, if, like I said, you're speaking with 10 people every single day for a year, you, you're going to have a, I don't know how many that is. I need a calculator, but you're going to have, <laughs> you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have thousands of people really easily. And that is literally done, done by spending half an hour a day engaging with people. You have to invest time in it. If you want to build an audience, you have to put in the time and, I know I've, I've got a huge um, Twitter audience, but I have that because every single morning I woke up at six and the first thing I did when I woke up was posted on Twitter, interacting with people, liked content and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm still, I'm not doing it to that degree now just because I don't feel that I need to because I've built up an audience that's, um, you know, sustaining everything else, but I'm still in the Facebook group, still posting content, still interacting with people and still commenting, still liking content. You, you just have to keep doing it. And I find that if you make it a routine, mm -hmm. and I think, rut I think routines definitely key to any success because um, micro actions every single day doesn't really feel like you're doing anything because the amount of times when I, you know, that six o'clock in the morning when I'm posting, I literally had days where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? This feels like a waste of time. But fast forward five years, I'm now at a point where a good chunk of my income, you know, a massive chunk of my income is from sponsorship and I wouldn't have gotten sponsor sponsors if I had an audience and I wouldn't be able to do any of the affiliate partnerships. So it pays off. It's hard. It's hard to do daily. You know, it feels like a slog and it feels like nothing's happening. But if you keep doing it, you keep at it, it's going to work. Um, I, 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 don't know. I, I agree with you. 
I'm the other champion. I don't know if I said three, but um, I would say that if you if you are taking this route of um, building a, a tribe around something, you need to know what that something is. So for me, it's been logo design, and I've stuck to that, and it's it's not been easy to stick to one thing because mm-hmm. I'm interested in loads of other stuff. Right. So investing all of your time to to just share content around one thing is hard. And I've seen people start building things, but then they get distracted by shiny objects, you know, the shiny object syndrome, like they're, mm-hmm. they'll be excited about Lego design one day. And then the next day they'll be excited about, I don't know, um, something else, you know, right. and, and they never focus on one thing. So you have to be really focused. I agree with you. Cause I mean, I've, I've been through it, you know, especially as a designer, you get this, you want to do other types of designs or you, you want to be, yeah. you're, you want to be known for other types of designs and you, you kind of veer off the path and you say, yeah. okay, well, I'm doing logos. Um, let me go check out hand lettering. Let me go check yeah. out illustrations. I, so I feel like being focused, which you, what you said, it is hard. It is very hard. hard. Yeah. Yeah. But um, being able to do that um, is great. But yeah, if, if you can become known for one thing, it I think that that's what makes a big difference because I I don't particularly think I'm the best logo designer there is. I know people are a hell of a lot better than me, but um, I was speaking to I don't know if you know Tom Ross. I was mm-hmm. speaking to Tom the other day, and he he was literally having a he was having a conversation with someone, and he knows pretty much every single graphic designer in the industry someone wanted a logo and the first person he thought of was me and it's weird because I don't really share that many that much of my own work on things like Instagram I've just focused on you know um, creating content around logo design and putting up case studies and building a website but because because you know built a community around this and and an audience around this I've become the logo geek you know and people know me as the guy that works on logo design but in reality I I work on websites I you know um, I was sitting down drawing little monsters the other day you know <laughs> you share 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 the kind of share the kind of stuff that you actually want to be known for, known for. and you can still do the other stuff but you know if, if you want to be I, I think, you know, a key to building an audience is really having a focus. And, and for me, I've been sharing a lot about logo design and that's that's the bulk of the projects that I, I get. But like I said, I can do other stuff. I can do illustration. I can build websites. I can, I can build exhibition stands, design. I can design anything. But I focus and that's why I, I think it's been going well and, and why I get projects because... Tom Ross, he knows pretty much every single graphic designer there is. You know, he's creating products for graphic designers. Right. And the fact that that conversation happened where he spoke to someone that wanted the Lego design and he, the first person that, that came to mind was me. And that's because I focused on only creating content around Lego design. So I've become known for the expert on that topic. I think one thing that you've done very well is making your platform a resource for people. Yeah. I think yeah. It, it's more than just, okay, I'm sharing my work, but it's it's a resource. There's there's how to's on there. There's where your best practices. There's there's all that stuff in regards to logo on yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. I mean a, I would say a big part of that is because I am genuinely interested in it. You know, I I'm not just a lot of the content that I create um, on my website anyway is primarily for SEO, but I can make that content nonsense. I don't want to. I actually want to make it valuable. I, I do actually genuinely want to help people because just enjoy it. <laughs> like right. Things like the Facebook community, I don't really make it, it. It's not really worth my time. It, it takes hours moderating that group, but um, I get a lot out of it personally. You know, I I I've learned so much from the people in the Facebook community. 
And I, I always think to myself, if I'm learning from this, other people must be learning so much as well. That's true. And I just want to keep that resource there and keep maintaining it. But I, I don't make anything from that, you know, it's, it's, I know I do affiliate marketing and stuff like that, but I don't really want to, want to spam the group right? because I'm one of, you know, um, that group isn't about me that that group is greater than me i'm just moderating it and um i just like creating content that, that's of value because i'm learning from it and i it's i found it really really um personally nice that you get designers that are just starting out come to you and said i've learned a lot from this and i i remember when i you know was starting out i I had this guy that, um, you know, that worked at the local print shop and he, he used to just talk through stuff. And if he didn't invest that time, I wouldn't be a graphic designer. And it's nice to know that I can give that value back to lots of people by putting it out there online. So I, I just feel that as a graphic designer that's been doing it now 15 years, I feel a sense of commitment to pass that knowledge back down. And I think everyone should do this as well because it makes the world a better place, right? <laughs> so <laughs> as much as it can, you know, you're helping. It's true. I'm with you. <laughs> you're 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 helping people um, that are starting out, and and that knowledge. Okay, there's loads of books and stuff out there that can people read read, but if you just steer people in the right direction it's nice to know that you can give back in some way. And, and I think, you know, if you're a graphic designer or a web designer or whatever, I, I think you should have that way of looking at things. You know, Cause that guy that taught me, that guy that, you know, gave me like half an hour of his time every couple of months, I probably wouldn't be a graphic designer now if he didn't give me that time. And it's, mm. I'd, I'd like to be that person for other people as well. So a lot of the content I create, even though it is for SEO, you know, I do get some benefit out of the blogs on my website. It's just nice that you can actually give back in some way to people. And um, I probably give away too much of my time for free, but you know, <laughs> you know, that I, I don't see anything wrong, wrong with that personally. Man, Ian, you just, just <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Just dropping knowledge bombs. Man, I can see people awesome. saying very true. <laughs> <laughs> this has been awesome, man. As I said, one of the most helpful person on the planet. Um, for me personally, just our conversations, just 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 mm. just diving in with ideas back and forth. Um, always, always, always. I'm I'm glad we were able to make this happen. Have yeah, absolutely. On. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna let you go, but dude, this has been. And, um, yeah thanks um it's it's been an honor to be part of this you know it's your 100th episode and um you know you've only got a limited amount of time that you can actually spare so it's an honor that you picked me to be part of that um you know part of that moment so uh, you know keep going um uh, look forward to episode 200 <laughs> ah, love it love it love it thanks again Ian. yeah you're welcome bye all right <laughs> thank you for listening to this week's episode I hope it's been super valuable to you and you're now ready to take your audience building, your community growing to the next level to help you and help me build our empire, for lack of a better word, or just to build our thing. Um, Remember to stop by iTunes, Passion Behind the Art, and leave a review and subscribe it's very important to me it helps the podcast grow and it makes me feel good to kind of hear from you guys to know what you like about this podcast what it's done for you so jump on itunes and subscribe and leave a review passion behind the art be blessed